every single spirit in the Conjuring House is here this evening, and we have proof of it. It's a huge piece of American history, and it's also a piece of paranormal history. No way. What the? This is dangerous. I am Bathsheba. Oh, okay. He said, for the sake of the children, you should leave lights on at night. Lorraine gave her specific directions. Don't pursue paranormal investigation. We're at one of the most haunted locations in all of America, the Conjuring House. That house really had very, very bad vibes. Um, I've often described the farmhouse as a portal cleverly disguised as a farmhouse. I knew the house was haunted. All I had to do was walk in it. What's the name of the woman who you thought was haunting the house? She has since identified herself as Abigail. Abigail. Oh my god! Oh, oh, this was, oh dude, look at right next to Connor! Dude, you look really freaky. Yeah. Oh my god! The veil is growing thinner. Well, that is really strange. What? Who's affecting Connor? I still feel threatened. I don't know that I'll even be willing to see the film. For the same reason, I'm unwilling to ever go back to the house again. I never would. Snow Haunted Houses is the infamous Conjuring House in Harrisville, Rhode Island. What really went on inside this portal disguised as a farmhouse for the family that lived there was harrowing. You are a what the f***? That just said Oh, dude! A reportedly haunted Rhode Island home, The Conjuring. I saw him completely solid, saw him evaporate into thin air. That was our initiation from becoming a normal family to a paranormal family. Ron. From who? It won't, it won't leave. leave. Here. No way! What? Said Ed. Ed. What? The scariest to them about living in the house was never knowing what was coming next. Oh, that just said my name. The number three. The number six. Three sixes! Spirits, can you find Adam? Most of you know that very recently we investigated the Conjuring House in Rhode Island, USA. The clip we're about to show you is the clearest and most intelligent spirit box interaction we've ever had. And for this one, we're gonna need your help. There's one word that we still haven't managed to decipher. Please let us know what you think. Whilst playing a game of hide and clap, I asked the spirits to find Adam. And this is the response that we got. By the way, we are Ghost Troop Investigation. If you're interested in all things paranormal and would like to watch one of our live streams or some of the evidence we find, drop a follow. Now here's the clip. Spirits, can you find Adam? Don't tell them where you are.
you think there's anyone there just now? Yeah. I do. Who's that? What? Who's that, Janet? Pardon? Stuart Certain. Stuart Certain, and he's one of the voices? Yeah. Why do you think he comes and speaks through you? To noise, to win noise. Does he ever say anything nice? Well... Don't know, really. Shall we so try and speak to him? No. We'll see if he'll speak to us. Yeah. Is anybody there? No, no. Who's there? Doctor... Doctor who? Chases here. Why do you think he comes and speaks through you? To noise, to win noise. Does he ever say anything nice? Well, don't know really. Shall we try and speak to him? No. We'll see if he'll speak to us. Yeah. Is anybody there? No, no. Who's there? Doctor. Doctor who? Mr. Gross, a lot of people hearing these voices produced by the children mm -hmm. will simply say that they are very good ventriloquists mm -hmm. and that this is all a hoax. Mm -hmm. How would you react to that? Certainly not. Um, they're, they're certainly not very good ventriloquists. We have had tests on them to see whether they can ventriloquize. They can't. Um, to keep up this particular type of voice, for any length of time without damage to the vocal cords is absolutely impossible. I mean, there must be some hoarseness attached to it. But don't forget, these children don't do this for a couple of minutes or so. They do it for lengths of periods up to three hours and without any hoarseness or sore throats whatsoever. Well, Pat's guy, Pat, you've got something to say, son. Yeah. I'd like to know how you make this noise without bashing Janet's vocal cords to pieces. If I do yeah. it for half a minute, I get a sore throat. Joe? Guy Lyon Playfair is an author of books on the paranormal, with experience well. of poltergeist cases in Europe yeah. and Brazil. How do you do it, mate? God, I make cowards. Don't you ever get a sore throat, Janet? No. Sure? Yeah. You never get pain in the back of the neck or something? No. Mm. Oh, what do you mean? I don't ask for you. I'm not with you. What? Well, oh, you're with me now. With me. The um, sensation that they can make you. Well, tell us about that. Oh, no, no tell me about. Tell me about that. You get it. You get it now. It's buzzing in the well, back of the neck. Do you feel it vibrating as if it was sort of? Um, no, like someone. Someone what? Got their hands on the back of my neck, like that. The town of Enfield was North London. The kid I was, was a very outgoing child, very energetic. I loved swimming and I loved sports. I was sort of helpful towards my younger brothers and sisters. It was just like a normal family life, really. We had no knowledge of the history of the house before the happenings and the events started. This racket started to occur in the back bedroom and some disturbance 
and my mum came into the room and she said, Johnny and Janet, pack it up and sleep. We've got to get up in the morning. And the chest of drawers near the wall and the door had slid into sort of the doorway. There was like incidents that happened to me, like the curtain which wrapped itself around my neck, which was quite life-threatening for me. And it brought it home to me that this could kill you. And we was all in a terrible state, very scared and tired of it. And it got worse as the time went on. We got more exhausted with it. It's what happens in the supernatural demonic world. In, in order to infiltrate someone's life, they don't just, oh, oh, I now have you, I now have you possessed. They have to weaken you by creating turmoil, noises in the night, things that go bump. They start to elevate fear and they begin to feed on that fear. For the family, when weird things started to happen, they actually did the right thing and they caught the cops. <laughs> and that's how the police were involved. They came to the house, they uh, investigated, they checked around, and sure enough, um, all the weird stuff that the family were saying were happening in the home um, actually happened to the police officers. This chair in the corner sort of shot forward about a metre in front of them on its own. And she sort of went like that, the policewoman, and she sort of looked in disbelief and was looking to see something was attached to it and one of us might be playing a joke on her, maybe. That's the sort of look she gave. When you read their interviews, it's like they could not get out of there fast enough. My neighbour called the newspaper. We didn't know what else to do, I suppose, like in desperation for some sort of help. The chap on the news desk... We didn't know what else to do, I suppose, like in desperation for some sort of help. The chap on the news desk, being a bit sceptical, obviously didn't believe her at all. The newspaper thought that my neighbour was drunk. They don't come across this every day, do they? When she mentioned the police had seen this, they had to believe them then. You wouldn't ignore the fact that with the police witnessed something, that was good enough for us. I was in my early 20s. I was a photographer on the Daily Mirror, covering anything, everything. News, sport, fashion, you name it, I, I shot it. Janet was brought in, and as she came into the room, suddenly, things just took off. Wherever Janet was, it, ju it just seemed to happen. Kids are kids, you know, they'll do funny little things for attention, but not the things that we were, we were seeing, we were witnessing there. They couldn't have done those things. They weren't even in the same room at the time. So, no, I quite believe what I, what I was watching was genuine. You'd have chairs tip up, beds turn over, drawers would fly out in a room there was no one in. Oh, my God. The levitation of those girls. They would levitate. I remember being pulled from my bed. I felt like a cold hand feeling and pushed up into the air. It was like a force. And I was screaming. And they'd levitate, crisscross in the air. The shot of Janet levitating was done with a cable running down to where I was, down in the main sort of living room. She was up in the bedroom. We had a camera set up in the corner, motor driven, with stroboscopic flash. I wasn't in the room at the time, I didn't see this until the following day when we process films and have a look. Um, so that, that came as a real surprise to everyone. That We knew that she was falling out of bed. We could hear the bang on the floor. We knew we could hear a scream. We knew what was going on. We had, only had Janet's word for it. But then the following day, we'd look at the pictures. That would prove it. It became, over the months, uh, a bit of everyday life, which was quite bad, but... Before that, I certainly thought that ghosts were ghost stories and they were all fictitious. We'd realised that we had to get other people involved, i.e. the Society for Psycho Research, who look into these things. Um, and that's when people like Morris Gross um, were involved and they were the, quote, professionals as concerned. I understood that he had a connection with, with the case. He'd gone along there. 
believing that it was his recently deceased daughter, who was also called Janet, who was trying to contact him from beyond the grave, sort of thing. And I'm sorry, I'm sore, lost on me. Janet, are you all right? This voice channeled towards Janet's direction, and we looked at her face, but her mouth wasn't moving. Ed, no, no. I think people thought at first that I was doing it deliberately. So tests were done. Mr. Gross filled her mouth up with water and we all was watching and the voice was still talking. And Mr. Gross asked him, where are you from? I come from the grave. We are in the actual graveyard where Bill Wilkins is actually buried. Mum, she's watching over us. The expression on my mum's face is just how she used to look at me. <laughs> I felt sorry for the kids because everyone had to be there to see it, from Cambridge professors to TV companies. There was even one, there was a ventriloquist, was invited along to the house to see if Janet was making sounds herself and, you know, this sort of stuff. There were so many witnesses and so many people had seen things. With the media there, reporters, Investigators. There was no privacy anymore. Our lives weren't their own. My name's Kent Allen. We're with the uh, television news programme Wide Angle. I was hoping to have a word with you about the uh, disturbance. This family became minor celebrities at the time, and this wasn't just a family off by themselves, off in the woods with nobody around. This was a council house in the middle of London. It is the house that you would never think that was haunted, and inside were these people living this nightmare. There was a buzz that went around that Ed and Lorraine were coming over from the States to witness you know, what was happening in the house. I remember that everyone thought, wow, this is fantastic. You know, this is really interesting that someone's going to you know, bo really bothered uh, to do so much, to come so far. I've done research all over the world. I never think that someone's going to, you know, bo really bothered uh, to do so much, to come so far. I've done research all over the world. I never charged for anything I did. What happened wasn't good. I needed to help them. When Ed and the rain come to the house, to me it felt like some sort of comfort had arrived for the first time. Ed and Lorraine exemplify, especially in the 70s, your neighborhoods. You know, how people weren't so afraid to help each other. You just did it because it was the right thing to do. Lorraine has cited this particular case as being one of the most terrifying of, of her career. What's your life? I never, never thought anything like that would happen to me. She said, uh, there's definitely some spirit here. And she said, I feel it's not always good. And she said, I wouldn't say it was very evil, but she said, I'm very worried about it. Lorraine has always said to me, she goes, I know that this gig <laughs> is ordained. You know, it was meant to be, and like it or not, you know, I gird up. And despite the fear and despite the weariness, there was never any doubt for her. You can see it's the house, there's no doubt about it. We had Margaret and Janet come back and visit us while we were shooting. This is my mother's bedroom. She always had a chair in the corner here, uh, but it's very much like her room was. Oh, wow. This was a this is a recreation of the room. This is a set on. It really brings back memories. It was the first time they had seen Lorraine, who was on set the same day in 38 years. This is Margaret and Janet. Oh, Seen you in the films as well. In the other films, I've watched you. 
kids. Oh no. We never forgot. Thank you. It was an extremely emotional reunion for all of them because they remember Lorraine and Ed so fondly and how they had truly tried to help the Hodgson family, not just with the supernatural elements, but just help them as a family. Out of their repertoire of cases that they've investigated over their lifetime, this is one of their most interesting ones. Because for the nature of it, the Hodgson family have their fair shares of fans and skeptics. Our principal characters here are all children and children can be very interesting. Have you ever seen yeah. the Conjuring movies? Yeah. So they're actually based on a real house. What's the original story? The main people that haunt that are like seven soldiers. This little girl kept seeing in the walls. Their beds would shake, they would get scratches. It kept getting worse over the 10 years. The crazy part is it got to become famous because the final day that changed it all. They wanted to do like an exorcism on the house. To her claim, she was actually thrown across the entire room. room and smashed into a wall. Mm -hmm. And they were so angry about that that they actually kicked out the demonologist. They punched Ed in the face. Because they thought he was the guy making it worse. Yes, to Pranav. Are you a man? Are you a boy? You want the people in this house to move? One knock for yes, two for no. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Who is it that you don't like the most here? Is it? Is it? Is it their father? Is it their mother? Oh my God. There's some sign. Is that you moving something? Give me some sign that you're here. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to reveal your identity. A little girl is trying to do her homework. What you can see is the chair keeps sliding backwards. You're holding it down, aren't you? got that much strength to it. Uh, if you watch, you can see the little girl's legs are up on the rungs of the chair. She's not pushing herself up from the floor. The mother is not tipping that chair backwards. No. Nobody is touching that table. The table moves of its own volition. Walking one day in the more early morning and found that in the, in the niche of rocks. He said he felt very, a lot of pressure around him. He felt very depressed, anger. He said that's just by seeing that. Father, my hip touched that particular thing there. Oh, that's a the gargoyle? That's, only, yeah. Yeah. that's from yeah. the... Yep, there it was. Okay. Right. That was the majority okay. of stuff is in the back. It was just a gargoyle. At least it was for decoration. So. That's a voodoo. Okay. Right That's about nice. That's and then this thing in my head, the right here. Oh, don't worry about that. Yeah. And yet I bump into one more thing that Father says, don't worry about yes, that. Yes, please. That so one freaked me out. Years old. At least 150 years old. Yeah. It's by Haitian. It is Haitian. To me, that was the scariest so object in there. What they would do is um, you would uh, take a piece of clothing or something um, from the person. You would wrap a uh, piece of pork or something Me. Mm -hmm. and then put it in proximity where they live. And as the cursum and as the um, meat rots, uh, the person begins take one to, cur to curse becomes ill and what is this doll behind here 
That's Anna Bell. Anna Bell. That is. That is the demonic. He okay, said so that's Annabelle, that's the demonic. I knew it was Annabelle, I just wanted to hear how Father Jim would describe it. Annabelle was not behind in the attack. I think she was sitting on a shelf at the time. And Annabelle actually jumped off the shelf and approached the priest. Do you know anything about it? Father... Was it um, Father no. no, no. I'm not going to say his name. But, okay, no, um, He was an exorcist. He should have known better. But he, um, for some reason, he challenged it. And um, he came to show, came to show, I don't know, in his new car. Um, he dropped them off. He's down here. And he, he dropped them off. We went back. And he said he was, it was an internal accident. The whole car was totaled. He just barely came out with losing his life. But he said, as he looked into the rearview mirror, he saw the image of the dog. So by our faith, we are protected. Faith, yeah. And faith protects us. Truly really believing. Uh, you know, whatever, you know, as long as we believe in God and ask for God's help, um, God will protect us from all demonic. He will protect us. Sometimes good people are affected by evil. Yes, that's, that's, you know, the nature of the game, unfortunately. And, but your your trust totally has to be in God, otherwise uh, you're at a loss. Uh, nowadays, people seek uh, the help of, of witchcraft and, and things. I think I'm heading for the door, but don't remember these. I've uh, seen these with more light to them. Very creepy. I'm not sure what their story is. Oh, the shadow doll. The shadow doll. Um, I noticed when I was just walking uh, by it that it tends to... Ed Warren's office was somewhere back there. Like his files had leave. Don't give any. Okay. That's Ed behind that? me. Yeah. That this window is from a haunted house. It's called the Bomas House. And I put that up with but it's supposed to That's beautiful. So he was next to this head. I think I'm about to bump into something and I get nervous. Uh, do you feel comfortable talking about any of the cases? Uh, this, uh, My defense, uh, all day, they said uh, don't touch someone anything. Buried, uh, or was someone no. used this to sleep I, in? I, a teenager used it, thought that he was a, uh, a vampire. He actually did drink blood. But he was, he's, hopefully he still is in a mental institution. And that's what that, he thought he was a vampire. And uh, the shadow? Shadow doll was bought by a couple who thought it was a, um, a Victorian doll. Um, that night they brought into the home, both of whom had a very frightening nightmare and I had the same nightmare and um, when they talked about it the next day they realized something was wrong they called Ed and Lorraine Ed came came down and they told us to take it out yes and that's how they got that and this um, if I'm not mistaken was the that is the idol satanic idol that was found in Sandy Hook by a hunter walking one day in the more early morning and found that in the, in the niche of rocks. He said he felt very, a lot of pressure around him, he felt very depressed, anger. He said that's... And I mean, and this is dark, dark, like ISO 1600 dark, uh, wide open. 
the camera is seeing a little more detail than I could with my eyes. Some of these objects I didn't really see at all. The bride has a slash mark on her throat that I didn't quite notice, but was told later. And if you haven't watched the original interview, um, it's great. Heather did a great job at uh, FearNotTV.com. You can watch it there or on this same YouTube channel, the Lorraine Warren. And we speak to Tony and have a, an abridged version of this basement tour down here. Better color corrected. Uh, this is pretty much straight out of the camera which is a Blackmagic cinema camera. Um, Father Jim turned on some kind of music down here, and then Annabelle lit up right there. There's a light on Annabelle. Annabelle is much larger than I ever pictured her to be. And that's her. Remember, we're told not to touch anything, and I'm not the most steady guy. I'm making a very conscious effort to not touch anything. The devil card there kind of freaked me out a little bit. Um, seeing these with more light to them very creepy I'm not sure up because I'm gonna be a little embarrassed here in a little bit okay. this is uh, some of father's father Jim's like uh, office area I believe down here we're not in the museum yet this is the hallway to the museum I believe I promptly hit my head on this doorway, which was good. So we're not actually in the museum yet. Uh, this is the hallway to the museum, but definitely kind of creepy. Uh, very cold, very dark. Heather said she felt the overwhelming need to cry right there. Is this, are we in museum land? Yes, we are. Father, would you like to bring her? Mm -hmm. I didn't expect this. Um, Father Jim gets ahead of us and starts doing a prayer before we actually open up the museum doors.
Here we go. Uh, I could pretend that I was brave, but at this point, pretty nervous. I didn't know what to expect in here. And I mean, and this is dark, dark, like ISO 1600 dark, uh, wide open. The camera is seeing a little more detail than I could with my eyes. Some of these objects. I and there's some people that are afraid to even go in. Right here is a conjuring mirror. Everything and anything in here we have investigated. Don't ever touch anything. And if you do, let me know. This is the worst thing in here. It's that doll. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stare at it though. So you, you can take the picture, but I'm not gonna stare at it because that is that has done badly bad harm on, on a lot of people. You have to conjure the spirits in order to get him. You know, you're not going to get him by just walking around here. And that's the one that's sort of depicted a little bit in this movie, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. That, that's the Annabelle doll. Yes. Well, there we go, the son of the Holy Spirit, amen. What has been done is circular embolism, which is prayers, are said all the time, you know, to pray. You're a priest to bless. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely, yes, oh my God, yes, I can't do that. It's November 1st, 1971, I'm sitting here with Carolyn Perrin, who with her family has been experiencing supernatural occurrences. The children were badly affected, really badly affected. That was a typical place, I mean, that was a very, very, very bad place. It's not easy. It's not easy, you know. You, you know, you see things and experience things. It's more comfortable now. It's a lot more comfortable for me. I'm Lorraine Warren, and uh, th this is my home. We've lived here, oh, I guess about 40 years now. <laughs> this is where everything started. Everything started about our work. Something awful happened here, Ed. What is it? Whatever Lorraine sees, feels, touches, it takes a toll on her. A little piece each time. It's been quite a career, and I'm still involved. I'm still involved with hauntings, you know, and helping people get through. It's a very delicate thing with certain people because they're very terrified and very frightened. But. There's a lot of people that don't believe. You have a lot of spirits in here, but there's one that I'm most worried about because it is so hateful. Okay, so let's go in. I'll show you the house. There's a lot of pictures of us in, in the house. Here's, here's one of the pictures of Ed and I. You guys were inseparable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were. We didn't do anything without one another. You're um, in probably one of the most haunted places in the world because of the things that are in here. Everything in here has been taken from some place where people were either killed or maimed or so, so many ways. So it's, it's tragic for me, you know, to even go in. People are very, very interested in the museum. And there's some people that are. They went yes. to the Conjuring House. Mm -hmm. And I know we can't get into it too, too much, but I have never seen the most scary, realist. Without equipment. Like, without equipment, like, the, like but the most accurate, undebunkable footage I've ever seen in my life. Like, I have chills talking about it. Um, That's what I'm saying. What? It's so hard to, like, talk about because you know we, we hype up a lot of videos of course like, oh, they're great they're great they're great but this one no we're like, like i'll do it for you i'm not okay they they kind of are they're gonna break the internet with this and yeah. like they're kind of proving that there's a whole other 
fucking dimension going on and like heaven and all this like I just I don't want to get it Would you spend the night here? What's all these bike Hold snacks about? Is that you? No. Did you hear that? Yeah. Hello, who's there? Hello? That's that door, wasn't it? Yeah. Can we ask you, can you make another knock, knock for us, please? Move that door. If you move that door, we'll leave right now. We'll go. We're sorry to scare you if we have. If you want to be left alone, we'll go. We need to give us a sign. Right now I'm standing inside of the real Conjuring house. Now tonight at 3 a.m. I will be doing a live ghost hunt inside of the real Conjuring house. Now I'm currently standing inside of the seance room where Ed and Lorraine would have conducted their seance when they came here. Now Carol and Perrin would have been thrown from this room into that room because of how intense the seance got. Now right next to the seance room is the library. They actually have books that go flying to this day, so they've told us to keep an eye on the library because it can be a very active area. Tonight I'll also be using a brand new piece of equipment from Ghost Up that's actually a bell, and when it's activated, it will go off. So hopefully tonight the spirits here can interact with the bell, and we'll see if we can make any more contact with Abigail or the other entities here at the Conjuring House. Now, if this video hits a thousand likes before I go live at 3 a.m., I will start our live investigation inside of the basement here at the Real Conjuring House. All right, everybody, in tonight's video, we are playing hide and clap in the Real Conjuring House. As you can see right now, we are in the real Conjuring house here in Rhode Island, where the events from the movie The Conjuring took place in real life. This is a very, very famous, very haunted house. And if you've seen The Conjuring, you probably remember the scene where the whole family plays hide and clap. They go to different rooms in the house and they, someone gets blindfolded and they try to find them. Well, tonight we're gonna all take turns playing that game in the real Conjuring house, one at a time, blindfolded and clapping. We've got Creepy. my dad, Papa Spooks, here with us tonight. We've got Connor behind the camera. But where's my mom? Have you seen Mary? Oh, oh my God! The costume suddenly drops and Mary walks out of the room. I do want to preface this by saying, we have already had paranormal activity happening in here. Eerily enough, Connor and Jeff and I all heard what we described as a noise from this room right when we were talking about playing this right game. Here. Guys, let's all clap together. One, two, three. So how we're gonna do this this evening is a mixture of the actual game and a little bit of ghost hunting. So one person is going to be the clapper. Mary, my mother, has volunteered to be the clapper first, but what that means is you have to sit alone somewhere in the conjuring house by yourself. Are you ready for that? <laughs> I think so. What we're gonna do for them, if you wanna show this, Connor, we're gonna give my mom then, first up, two tripods. We see what she's doing. I'm gonna blindfold myself. We've got some paranormal equipment that my mom is gonna set up by her. And then I'm gonna put the blindfold on and these two are just gonna follow around and film, making sure I don't knock anything over or hit anything too. Hopefully we can get the ghosts to come out too. Maybe they remember this game being played. I don't know. But essentially, now it's gonna be, I'm gonna let these two go with you, set up the cameras and the ghost gear, and then we're gonna start. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right, let's do this. <laughs> so you're gonna pick a place. No peeking. Okay. I think we're staying down. So this room was supposed to be a lot of activity. This room. Yeah. So I'm sitting alone downstairs in the Conjuring house right now, and I can, I don't know, I'm just really anxious waiting for them to find a hiding spot, just being alone down here. Why didn't I volunteer to go first? Oh, oh God. Why don't you just sit down? Maybe you can sit back here. Okay, like in between there? Maybe. Oh, I just fell into the basket. I just fell into the basket. Did she just hear that? 
Yeah. yeah. What was that? It just pushed off there. No, it's the car. Oh, oh my, my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It oh is god. a car. Did you hear the Yeah. yeah. She was telling us about that the boy likes to roll the car around. Oh and my this is we heard god. clicks oh, like, like, when totally. we were over there. Oh look at that. Okay, it sounds like they're experiencing some paranormal activity up above me. I don't know what's going on up there, but I hear them kind of screaming and shouting. But, man, we were up here this whole time. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. earlier on the whole thing. And Connor and I have walked up here. Yeah. I mean, and we were following we Colin. We went through the whole... Oh, my God. I mean, God. literally, I just happened to hear a little thing, and I looked over, and I saw it actually flashing in that dang bucket. Oh. If I had grabbed... Wow. That was super cool. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! Shit. Are you filming? Yeah. Okay. Oh. You gonna be good? Okay. You ready? Yeah, don't tell me about what happened yet. I could hear something. Okay. Okay, so I have no idea where my mom Mary is at. I'm gonna put the blindfold on. We've, they've taken me to a completely different part of the house. We're in the old living, dining room area. So, okay, you guys wanna spin me around? And just make sure I don't run into anything. Okay, give me a clap! Oh, this is actually so creepy. <laughs> god damn, bro. Dude, oh my god. Oh! Oh! Okay, give me a clap. Oh shit, I hear her over here. This is actually so scary, not knowing where the hell you're like. Ah! Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Do I hear the REM pod? Yeah. Oh, oh I'm gonna use the REM pod to my advantage, bro. I'm following that noise. <laughs> okay, be careful. This is stairs. Clap. <laughs> God, this is breaking. <laughs> Wait, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> Thank God. About you. Yeah, Sitting here, all alone in the pitch dark, you guys were not even coming up the steps. I saw like a orb. Like I've never seen an orb before. Really? Go really? across the ceiling up here, and I'm like, is that like a light reflection? No, there's there's nothing, nothing you could, and you guys weren't even there. I'm like, wait, seriously? And this thing has been going on. Oh, look, and that thing is spiking yeah, too. This was spiking. What'd you guys see up here? So we were setting up the cameras. Mary yeah. sat down. That stuff happened. Something shaking. Jeff was like, Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm like what? That car right there on the nightstand rolled into that basket. What? Yeah. yeah. I was standing. Where no. Was we were hearing like we're like, Yeah, in this room. You were hearing room. noises here. And you saw an orb just now? I saw an orb. I have never seen an orb. But up on the ceiling. And then I see something go like right over that doorway. I'm gonna go hide now. And next up is my dad, Papa Spooks. Ooh. Your turn. Buddy. I'm ready, man. Cool. Yeah, I don't want that. Do you guys like that we're playing that game with you? If you do, can you clap for us? If you like that we're playing games in here, can you make a knock like that? If you were just up here with me and I possibly saw you, can you knock or make a noise so I know that you're here with me? <laughs> Michael, can you shut that door over there for us, please? That light's pretty bright. We'll keep playing, though, if you do. Oh, my God. I don't want to do this alone okay. now. Okay, I'm saying I'm happy. I'm done with it. Okay. Down here in the conjuring basement by myself and see if I can hear anything. I was down here alone a couple years ago. Heard some really, really creepy stuff, so I'm not too keen on doing this by myself. But it seems like there's dude. Dude, 
Do you feel that? Oh, look at it spiking! Look at right when I'm saying that. Uh -huh. Do you see that, Connor? Oh, what the? F getting that on a clear yeah. shot? Oh, oh, I got it, dude. Look at that. Right when I said, oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god dude. I am a little bit scared. I'm definitely not excited. Okay, guys. So I'm here, kind of in the um, in the bathroom. I'm um, just waiting for those guys to. Uh, Colin's gonna hide. This game is freaky. Um, the clap game. And we just had a bunch of activity that you'll see um, when Mary was hiding. Dude, this, oh my God, oh, dude! Oh, this, look at this, oh, Connor. Oh. What the hell, bro? Oh! 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 oh. oh wait. That's the video. Oh, okay, I'm gonna. Okay, if you hear me scream. Honestly, be careful. Yes, I'm in here. Are you ready? Okay, I'm gonna start. Yeah, I've got the cameras right here. Okay. Come in. Okay. Okay guys, I'm down here alone in the conjuring basement. This is way scarier than doing the blindfold. Oh my god. The moment I started talking. Oh! There it goes. Give me a clap! If there's anybody down here, let me know you're here. I think I have to help him. Give me a clap, please. And this, I don't know if you can see this, this is still going crazy, dude. Okay, is this the place yeah. down that I go? And hold on to the railing. I go down. Thank you. This is The Conjuring House, the house where the events depicted in the movie The Conjuring took place. It's known as the most haunted house in all of America. We spent the night there hunting for ghosts, and what we found will shock you. I'll be posting more videos here on my TikTok and my YouTube tonight.